In this tutorial, we'll build a products and categories API in Laravel 12 with JWT authentication. Let's quickly go over the API endpoints we'll build. For categories, we'll have first we have get API loss categories. This endpoint is used to fetch and display a list of all categories available in the system. Next is post API categories. This allows us to create a brand new category by sending the required data, like the category name in the request body. Then we have get API categories ID. This retrieves the details of a specific category identified by its unique ID. The PUT API categories ID endpoint is used to update an existing category. Finally, we have delete the API categories plush ID. This removes a category permanently from the database, again based on its ID. Now let's look at the API endpoints for products. First is get API products. This retrieves a list of all products and each product includes its related category information. Next we have post API as products. This is where we create a new product. Then there's get API products ID. This lets us view the details of a specific product, including its category relationship. The PUT API products ID endpoint is used to update an existing product. Finally, delete API products ID removes a product from the database, again based on its ID. Let's start with step one, creating models and migrations. First, we generate the models with their migrations by running these commands. This creates two models, category and product, each with its own migration file. Next, let's set up our database structure. In the categories migration, we'll define a simple table with just an ID, a unique name, and timestamps. Then in the products migration, we'll define the products table. Each product has an ID, a name, an optional description, a price, and a foreign key that links it to a category. Notice how we use a foreign key on category ID. This ensures that each product is always tied to a valid category. Also with onDelete Cascade, if a category gets deleted, all of its related products are automatically removed as well. Finally, to apply these migrations, run PRDizen Migrate. At this point, our database tables for categories and products are ready and we can start building relationships between them. Now let's move to step two, defining relationships between our models. In the category model, we want to show that each category can have many products. A has many relationship. This means a single category like electronics can have multiple products such as iPhones, laptops, or cameras. Next in the product model, we define the inverse relationship using belongs to this tells us that each product is linked to exactly one category. For example, an iPhone belongs to the electronics category. Now let's move to step three, creating controllers. In Laravel, controllers handle the logic behind each endpoint. Since we're building an API, we'll generate two controllers, one for categories and one for products. We can create them using artisan commands. The API flag tells Laravel to generate controllers that are set up for API resources. That means we get methods like index, store, show, update, and destroy. But we don't get the extra methods used in web controllers like create and edit. Next is step four, building the category controller. This controller will handle all the CRUD operations for categories. Let's break it down. The index method returns a list of all categories in JSON format. The store method lets us create a new category. Before saving, it validates that the name is required, a string, and unique. The show method retrieves a single category by its ID. If it doesn't exist, it throws a 404 error automatically. The update method updates an existing category. It also validates the new name, ensuring it's still unique, but allows the current category's own name Finally, the destroy method deletes a category by ID and returns a success message. So with this controller, we now have full CRUD functionality for categories, list, create, view, update, and delete. All right, let's move on to step five, product controller. 
This controller handles all the logic for managing products, including listing, creating, showing, updating, and deleting products. The index method returns all products and we use with category. So each product comes with its category details. The store method validates input and creates a new product. The show method retrieves a single product by ID, again including its category. The update method lets us modify an existing product with the same validation rules as when creating. Finally, the destroy method deletes a product by its ID. With this controller, we now have full CRUD functionality for products. Now that we've created our controllers, let's connect them to routes so the API endpoints actually work. Open Roots API PHP and add the following code. We import both category controller and product controller at the top. We wrap everything inside route, middleware, auth, API to ensure all category and product routes require authentication. Then we use root AP resource for both categories and products. This automatically generates all the standard RESTful API routes, index, store, show, update, and destroy. The final step to bring your Laravel API online locally is to run. This will start the Laravel development server, usually at now that our routes are ready, let's move to step 7, testing with Postman. We'll use Postman to send requests to our API and verify that everything works as expected. Categories and points. Get API categories. List all categories. Need to log in first to get a token before making any request. Send a post request to your login endpoint. If successful, the response will include a JWT token. Once logged in with a valid token, you can send get API categories, list categories. The response depends on what's in your database. Post APL categories, create category request and response flow. Since our routes are protected, don't forget to include your bearer token in the authorization header. In the request body, we'll pass the category name as JSON like this. If the request is valid, the API will respond with a 201 created status along with the new category data, get API categories by ID, show category details. Next, let's try retrieving a single category by its ID. We'll send a get request to world API categories one. Put AP categories ED, updated category. Now let's test updating an existing category. We'll send a PUT request to our API categories one. In the request body, we'll pass the updated name as JSON, like this. If successful, the API responds with the updated category details. The name column changes from electronics and smartphones. Delete API categories ID. Delete category. We'll send a delete request to API categories 1. As always, include the bearer token in the authorization header. If the category exists, the API responds with a success message. After this, if we check the database, the record with ID1 will be gone from the categories table. We're creating a new category. Send a post request to API categories. If the request is successful, the server responds with a status code 201 created. Shows the new category with its ID name and timestamps. First, we list products. Send a get request to AP products. The server replies with all products, including their category details. Next, we create a product. Send a post request to API products. For example, iPhone 17, latest Apple smartphone, 999999, category 1. The server replies with 201 created and shows the new product details. Open the products table and we can see the new record. This confirms the product was successfully saved. Next, let's try showing a single product. I'll send a GET request to API products 1. The response comes back with the product details. We can see the ID, the name, which is iPhone 17, the description, the price, and the category ID. Now let's test our products listing again. If everything is working, the API will respond with a JSON array of all products. Now let's update our existing product. In Postman, switch the method to put and enter the URL. Paste in the following JSON payload. Once everything is ready, click send. If the update is successful, the API will respond with the updated product details, something like this. That confirms the product record has been updated in the database. Now let's see how to delete a product using our API. 
in Postman set the method to delete and enter the endpoint. Go to the headers tab and add your JWT token. Click send. If the product is deleted successfully, you'll get a confirmation response like this. And when you check your database or try to fetch the same product again with a get why API products one, it will return a 404 not found confirming the deletion. All right, we've reached the end of this tutorial. You now have a fully functional products categories API in Laravel 12 secured with JWT authentication. With this foundation in place, you can now extend the API further. For example, by adding authentication features, user roles, or permission-based access control. If you'd like to explore the complete project, I've shared the full source code on my GitHub repo. The link is in the description. That's it for today's session. Thank you for watching and as always, happy coding.